Ladies and gentlemen, imagine standing on the brink of a new frontier, one where clarity, precision, and informed decisions guide our every step. This is the realm of data and mathematics, a world where the power to transform our society lies in our ability to analyze and understand the intricate patterns that shape our lives. Mathematics is not just about numbers. It's about seeing the world in a new light. It's about uncovering the hidden truths that drive our most critical decisions. Data is the language that translates our complex world into understandable insights. Together, they empower us to tackle the most pressing challenges we face today. Consider this. Every decision we make, every policy we implement has far-reaching consequences. By leveraging the power of data, we can ensure these decisions are not only well-intentioned, but also effective and equitable. Data reveals the underlying realities that might otherwise go unnoticed. It challenges us to confront our uncomfortable truths and to devise solutions that truly address the root causes of our issues. In this journey, data is our guide and mathematics our compass. They help us navigate the complexities of our world with precision and clarity. They show us that the true progress comes not from guesswork or assumptions, but from deep analytical understandings of the factors at play. Today, I invite you to embrace the power of data and mathematics. Let them illuminate the path forward, revealing insights that can transform our communities, our industries, and our lives. Let us harness this power to make informed, practical decisions that lead to a more just and prosperous future for all. Welcome to a world where data and mathematics are the keys to unlocking our potential and shaping a better world. Thank you. The Denver Hustle. As a kid, I remember my uncles who owned used car dealerships in northern Denver. They were always trying to hustle me. I was about 10 years old when they introduced me to the missing dollar riddle. They said they would each give me $5 if I could figure it out, but I had to mow every one of their lawns if I could not. This video by Math Meeting is linked below and it fully explains the riddle and the solution if you would like to see it explained in details. But in short, what my uncles explained to me, there are three guests checking into a hotel room. The manager says the bill is $30, so each guest pays 10 Later, the manager realizes the bill should have only been $25. To rectify this, he gives the bellboy $5 as five $1 bills to return to the guests. On the way to the guest room to refund the money, the bellhop suddenly realizes that he cannot equally divide the five $1 bills among the three guests. As the guests are not aware of the total of the revised bill, the bellhop decides to give each guest $1 back and keep $2 as a tip for himself and proceeds to do so. As each guest got $1 back and each guest only paid $9, bringing the total paid to $27, the bellhop kept $2 which when added to the 27 comes to 29. So if the guest originally handed over $30, what happened to the remaining $1? I remember being so confused as I did not understand. I kept telling my uncles that it did not make any sense. They laughed at me, but I insisted. Then I told them, that they were the ones who were confused. There was no missing dollar. They insisted there was, so I made them give me $30. One $20 bill, a $5 bill, and five ones. And I showed them that there was no missing dollar. And they just stood there looking at me in shock. 
each handed me $5, and with $20 in my pocket, I took my cousins to the video arcade that afternoon. Welcome to my channel, Show Me the Numbers. My name is Eric Torres, and I will be your host for today's broadcast. Please like this video and subscribe to my channel if you would like to see more content like this. So, what is the Denver Hustle? So today I would like to show you some numbers specifically concerning Denver Mayor's Mike Johnson's tax proposal for more affordable housing. And you may think this has nothing to do with the missing dollar hustle, but we will get there. So the proposal is to increase the sales tax by one half a percent. Mayor Johnson aims to tackle one of society's biggest challenges, housing inequality, or what many people call the affordable housing crisis. And taken at face value, it seems like this would be a very good plan. After all, no one can deny the extraordinarily difficult time that first-time homeowners are facing in today's market. This crisis is a significant economic burden for many, many Americans. Let's look at Goldman Sachs research data, the Housing Affordable Index, in this article by the National Mortgage Professional. It becomes apparent that housing is currently less affordable for first-time buyers than it has been in decades. Clearly, action is needed, and should no action be taken, many millennials will be disadvantaged by establishing their net worth in housing. So looking at the graph, you will notice that any number higher than 100 is considered an affordable housing market. Today, we are sitting at values that are lower than we have seen in most people's lifetime. However, looking deeper and asking more questions can reveal some uncomfortable realities. The problem I have discovered is in the method used to fund Denver's proposal additional sales tax. So what is the problem with sales tax to help out in this situation? Well, let's take a look at this Bloomberg article from 2015 that discusses the social and economic injustice local sales tax impose on the wealth equity. Essentially, the lower your income, the larger the percentage you pay in sales tax. In fact, the report shows that low-income Americans are taxed at twice the rate as the richest 1% when you use sales taxes. Of the three main forms of state taxes, sales, property, and income, sales tax hurts the poor the most, says Gardner. Sales taxes are highly regressive, he says. That is, they end up taking a bigger chunk of change from people that have smaller sums of money and slower income growth. Again, sales tax is a regressive tax that harms the poor. Denver's dilemma. Given this context, is it fair to question the impact of Denver's proposed sales tax increase? The data suggests that this proposal could exacerbate economic inequalities rather than alleviate them. The proposal essentially taxes the poor to help the poor, shifting $1 from the left pocket to $1 in the right pocket, but possibly taking out a little bit in the process. And this will probably leave everyone with less money in the end. As members of society, we must ask ourselves, are we willing to justify one type of inequality in taxation to attempt to fill another inequality in housing, and even if you're willing to do it, would the result gain in any net value to the poor people you're trying to help? These are the difficult questions that arise when we look at data. By acknowledging these challenges, we can strive to make better choices and avoid implementing policies that inadvertently harm those we aim to help. This example underscores the need for society to become data-driven in our decision-making process. 
looking at the complete impact of our choices is critical to avoid unintentional consequences. We have access to the information and it's crucial to convey it objectively, focusing on the effectiveness of achieving our goals rather than questioning just the goals themselves. But if the goal is to help the poor, Denver has a dilemma.